Good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. I'm glad all y'all out there could join us. We're going to have a good time tonight, and we're going to be discussing uh, routers and router bits. Now, I in no means ever cl claim that I'm an expert, especially in routers and router bits. I use them. I have used them for years, but uh, I my use is kind of limited. Uh, I do other stuff. Like, for instance, if I need a rabbit or whatever, rather than run it through a router, I'll use my dado set and my table saw most of the time because I feel more comfortable with it. But uh, I, I usually use them, but it's just I'm by no means an expert. But I figured it was a good topic. I had several people. Matter of fact, John uh, Schaffner was supposed to be on the night that the storm hit, and we didn't even have a show and do a little demonstration. And now John's having computer issues, so I don't know if it was storm-related or something happened but uh, anyway he's not even going to be on tonight and he might not be on for a while with the way it looks with his computer issues but anyway we'll have a good time we'll talk about and i'll tell you about what i know about uh routers if you have any questions uh i've got, got my computer set up over here for the chat so i'll be able to look over here and see if y'all uh, have any questions and everything and plus my panel if y'all could keep an eye out over there on the chat and if we have any questions uh I'll put uh, Paul seems to enjoy it, so I'll put Paul in charge of the chat since Charles is not here. So, uh, but anyway, we'll get all that done. Um, a couple of things I want to go over before we get started here, and then we'll get it into uh, the panel introductions. And we're going to invite a couple of people out there. Uh, if you're out there in the chat and want to join us, we got a couple of spots open. So, uh, just let's either uh, one of the guys on the panel. Matter of fact, they're PM on a few of y'all to see if you want to come on. Be as long as you got a camera and a mic, you're more than welcome to join us on the show. So, Sterling, I think you're out there, and Jim Bashirs, if y'all want to join us, come on in. So, anyway, let's go on to talk about two things real quick. Uh, number one, the Whirly Gig Wars. Whirly Gig Wars is still into effect. You have until the 31st of uh, July to uh, finish your Whirly Gig and get it entered and get the video in. If you have any questions or need any information about the Whirly Gig Wars, go to uh, simplywoodencreations.com, and I've changed it after Sterling was, me and him had a little talk about the challenge and contest thing, I've changed it, so go over the top, over, over to challenges instead of contest, I've changed that, so go over to the challenges, that will open up to a drop box, you'll see the Whirly Gig Wars, and you go over to 2017 Whirly Gig Wars, all the information you need is right there, plus if you go on my YouTube channel, uh, Laney helped me out, and we did a little video on the YouTube wars. So, or, or YouTube wars, really gig wars. I'll get it right in a second. And we're on the really gig wars, and we got the information on there also. So uh, that's the first uh, first thing I want to talk about. The second thing is also the uh, pallet challenge. Now, if you were with us last week, you found out that myself and Simply Wooden Creations is taking over the pallet challenge from Sterling. And I am very honored and grateful that he is, this, you know, he chose me to take it over for him. And uh, so that's going to be coming up, and that's going to be running from August 1st to August 31st. So the, once again, the rules and information you will need, go to simplywoodcreations.com, over to the challenges, use the drop box, take it down to Pallet Challenge, open that up, and all the information you need to enter, and the rules and regulations are all right there. Most of the rules on both of these challenges are pretty simple. So I believe that's all I have got to um, talk about as far as, but yeah, I mean, there's still, if you haven't started yet, you still have over a week. Uh, what is this, the 22nd? Let me open my calendar up. So you still have seven, eight, nine, you still got like 10 days. That is plenty of time for you to get off your butt, get out in your shop and build a whirly gig. So, you know, Plenty of time, so you you never know. You might be the one at the last minute that comes up with this brilliant idea, and you run out in your shop and build it and be the winner. I mean, wouldn't that be pretty cool? So never know. Um, other than that, I want to talk about my sponsors, which are Devoble Technologies for web design, development, and hosting. Go visit Devoble.com. They are the people that do my website. Great guys to work with. I call them up and tell them I needed to put the uh, uh, add the pallet challenge to uh, that, and they were they helped me get that page ready, and for me to put stuff on it. And then we've and by the way, by the if you go over there and look at the pallet challenge, I'm all excited about this. I think we've already got three or four um, sponsors that have already kicked in, and so uh, 
that's pretty cool already and it's not even August 1st and we've got three or four sponsors that's already donating so I'm happy about that so go over and check out my website and if you have any web needs go visit devobal.com and also uh, FastCap innovative pro products for the professional woodworker go visit FastCap.com they uh, support Simply Wooden Creations and they're supporting us in both the challenges and they're going to be donating uh, gifts for that. And plus, they support me all year long by uh, donating stuff to give to y'all on the giveaways. So, so go visit FastCap and show them some love. And then Rockler Woodworking and Hardware Create with Confidence um, for all your needs for woodworking. They are really great people. I'm teaching classes now up at the, the Altamont Springs Rockler for scroll sawing. A uh, bunch of great guys in that store. I mean, absolutely, from the manager right on down to every one of them, they're just fantastic guys I am having a blast not only uh, be, meeting new people and teaching them scroll saw but be, be able to work with these guys it's a privilege to work with these guys because they're so nice and so so friendly so Rockler Woodworking Hardware go visit them too and check them out I believe that's all I have to say at this moment and I've already run like five minutes into the show just talking about that so but uh, yeah Holy Gig Wars and also the Pilot Challenge and they're very excited and I'll in the future, don't forget the also in October is the scroll saw artist contest or challenge. We're going to change that to challenge too. So the scroll saw artist challenge will going to be in October. But let's go down the list. I guess Jim Bashir's and them decided not to join us. But let's go down the list and uh, uh, let everybody introduce themselves. And first off, let's go to uh, Mr. Donald. I haven't had him on in a while. I actually I didn't even realize who he was at first. <laughs> Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been that long. <laughs> Hey. I'm Donald Matthews. My YouTube channel is Donald Walker Five Woodshop. Uh, my website is rednecknowhow.com. And I'm glad to be back. I got a shop now. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's pretty cool. I, I, I've been wearing people out with pictures. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, I've, I've looked at them. I have, you know, the bad thing about when you accept. All these things that I've been accepting, and plus I have the own stuff I'm doing around here. Is a sometimes there's not enough hours in the day to do everything, and other times as you see these things, you go to comment, and then you look back in your news feed, and 30 other things have popped through, and now you got to go dig through to find that one. So, well, I mean, I I don't even have my show to do or doing all half the stuff any or any of the stuff you're doing contest, and I don't find the time to get all that with it. Yeah. So cool. Between, well, good day. Between, good day between day. working at your favorite store and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but uh, we won't get into that. We'll go on. So, all right. Next on the line is uh, Donna. Donna Presley, how you doing tonight, Donna? Doing good. Uh, finally got my internet fixed. They had to change out a couple of things. Um, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, webpage, Donna's Wooden Art. Um, other than that, just glad I can actually be back on again and talk with people. Cool. Somebody was saying we have an echo out there. I haven't heard an echo. Usually, I'm the one, I can hear an echo, but I haven't heard any echo. So, all right. Well, yeah. I mean, I can tell you right now, big difference. Whatever they changed, your pick quality and your sound is great. Yeah, they had to change out the whole thing. Wow. The antenna, and the little box thingy, and everything. Wow. Well, whatever they did, it worked. And then uh, Jim, Jim Bashir's just joined us. How you doing, Jim? Let me go on down the list and come back. You shake. No, head. okay, I got it. Okay, okay. I'm I'm good, but it's hot in this darn garage, man. I'll tell well, you. Trust me. <laughs> I uh I went to uh my da future daughter in law's birthday party was tonight, so we went to Outback and. Everybody eat dinner and had a thing at an Outback, and I left in time to come home for the show. But anyway, I forgot. To leave, turn the air conditioner on before I left, so it'd be nice and cool when I got back in here. So I walked back and I'm like, ha oh, oh. So I'm standing here right now, even though the air conditioner's on, it hasn't had a chance to kick it down. I'm sweating too. So, yeah. <laughs> so how you been? Good. Good. I, I grabbed my uh, router bits and my router, and I'm all set for the show. Good. Tell us where we can find you. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, it's Driveway Workshop. And uh, anything else, pretty much just Jim Bashir is all one word. Cool. Well, great to have you on board. Yep, thanks. And then Paul from Paul's Missy Woodshop. 
Can you hear me? Because I can't get rid of the mute on the microphone. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I'm Paul Corliss. I am Paul's Messy Workshop on YouTube, Paul's Messy Workshop on Instagram, and Paul's Messy Workshop.com on the internet. And uh, I appreciate you having me on, Russ. You're welcome. Good, good to have you here. And uh, the other Russ is trying to come through. His picture ain't coming in, so I'll skip him and come back. Next is uh, Lee, Mr. Lee Knighton. Ah, there, now it's working. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks for having me on, Russ. As uh, Russ said, my name is Lee Knighton. I uh, run Scrollers Choice. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the magazine, head on over to our website, uh, which is scrollerschoice.wixsite.com slash, or I'm sorry, scrollers, scrollerschoice.mag.wixsite.com slash home. Uh, also, uh, if you guys haven't seen the Facebook groups for uh, scrolling, we are having an Ohio picnic next April. Uh, the information for that picnic is on our club website, which is here. If you guys can see it. Oh, it's backwards on my screen. Fun. Uh, it's NEOS. It's backwards on your screen that we can read it. Okay. It's NEOS club, C-L-U-B dot Wix, W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com slash home. Go there uh, on the left-hand side of the page. Go all the way to the bottom. It says scroller registration and vendor registration. Click the scroller one, and it'll take you into the classes so you guys can see what we got so far. Uh, keep in mind that it, uh, April's a far way away. We don't have everything set up yet, um, but you will see uh, all the information where it's at and the classes that we currently do have. So go over there and check it out. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. You're welcome. And Mark Lindsay's out there in the chat. Mark, if you want to join us... Uh PM uh, one of the guys on the panel, and they will send you uh, a link, and you can join us on the panel. we got plenty of room. we got two more spaces open, so Mark Lindsay out there in the chat. If you want to join us, come on in. Uh, next is Mr. Uh, Shane, Shane Cole. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Shane. You can find me on all your social media networks under Shane's Hobby Shop. Uh, Right now, what I got going on is a 2,000 subscriber giveaway. And uh, Russ, don't mind, let me screen share this real quick. I mind, but it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Thank you, Russ. Uh, be sure you hit this subscriber button on my YouTube channel because this is a subscriber giveaway. And once you do that, uh, send me an email. Go straight to Shane's Hobby Shop, gmail.com, subject line, 2,000 subscriber giveaway. In your email, give me your name and shipping address, along with your YouTube channel. That way I can make sure you're a subscriber to my channel. Facebook page will also be nice, so I can let you know if you want or not. And if you want to ask me a question for a future Q&A, go ahead and ask me that. That's only optional. I don't, I don't need to be done, though. But as soon as I hit 2,000 on my YouTube channel, I will be doing a giveaway. And I got a bunch of uh, sponsors right now that I'll be giving away a bunch of nice prizes. And I'm still waiting on more sponsors. So if you want to be in my sponsors, uh, go ahead and just let me know. Send me an email. Contact me on Facebook or whatever. All right. Uh, Mom's not here tonight. She's actually taking a personal day just to be with Mom, so you only got me tonight. <laughs> okay. I guess we can deal with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then uh, he's he's in the house now, Mr. Russ, Russ Meadows. Hey, everybody. Uh, Russ Meadows here from the uh, Rusty Nails Witch Shop. You got me a hat with it on there now. Oh, cool. I like that. Yeah, though, you know, I went to the factory next door to me, uh, my wife, and uh, she got that done for me. Uh, but uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, under Rusty Nails with a Z Wood Shop. Cool. Thanks for having me. Now, is that, um, she do that with uh, vinyl or is that uh, embroidery? Oh, that's embroidered. embroidered. Well, she told me she couldn't do wood embroidery anymore. Well, she, she said, you know, that she gave away the, the hat frames. She right. sold them and uh, she kept something and... Turns out she was able to do it with something that she kept. 
Well, good. I'm going to hit her up. I want one. Oh, okay. I want one of those. I, want, I don't want yours. I want one of mine. I don't, <laughs> mind. I don't care about yours. <laughs> did she do that on an? Did she do that on an automated uh, sewing machine thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She does it. She has a a, a a six needle embroidery machine. Okay. My wife just got one. We haven't taken it out of the box yet. Yeah, that oh. thing is nice. She showed me pictures of it, and it's like it's got like six, eight, and eight. Nine, ten colors of thread coming in all at one time. I mean, it's yeah, like it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's an awesome machine. So yeah, she yeah, that's what she told me. She could do shirts and stuff, and she did that shirt for my uh, the woodworking club. A couple of shirts for us, the Lakeland Woodworking Club, and they were beautiful. Let me tell you, they were great work. And yeah. but uh, she said, yeah, it looks like she told you she had given her stuff for her hats away. And I'm like, we'll buy another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she didn't think she would do that much business with the hats, so she sold yeah. those to get some frames that she really, really needed. Right. And, uh, but she, somehow or another, she kept one, and and she put it on the other day, and uh, I actually came in from the shop, and uh, I walked back into her, her, her craft room, and she jumped in front of the machine, blocking my view of what she was doing, and I said, huh, what you doing? So I peeked around her and I saw this hat being made. She said I was just trying it out to see if it would work. By golly, it did. Cool. Well, tell her she's so. got a. I, I'm the first in line. If she decides she wants to do any more, I'm the first in line. <laughs> okay. All right. She's watching the show, so she'll probably hear right. that. Yep. I'll get with me. I'm the first in line. So, and then Mr. Chris. Chris has joined. Chris O'Hearn. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Russ. Hi, hi gang. How's it? Yeah. Try that again. Hey, Russell. Hey, gang. Sorry I'm late. Just got back from a wedding. Um, Chris at the old Cranky Workshop. Um, you find me on YouTube and Facebook. We're shooting and some more editing today before I head into the wedding. So hopefully I'll get a video on soon. So. Cool. Sounds good. I hope you do, too. I enjoy uh, one of my favorite videos that you've ever done is the, your uh, telephone that you did that hanging on the wall. I'm working on the telephone makes a reappearance. Oh, well, cool. That's <laughs> awesome. That's one of that right there is one of my favorite ones. Trust me, what you did. So, sticker sits on the wall right next to it. All right, guys. Um, well, we're going to get into the uh, topic, and let me just go through real quick. Uh, Michael, and I, I believe he might be kind of new. Michael Treader, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Uh, Your trash, my pleasure, is out there. Uh, I don't have a mouse on this. Sterling Davis is out there. Mark Lindsay's out there. Al Forte, Katie Dotson. Uh, I think I already said Sterling Davis. Uh, I don't have a mouse on this stupid thing, and I have to use this touchpad, which I hate touchpads. Uh, I'm going back and seeing if uh, Ken Moon's out there. Florence Leedy. Hi, Florence. Uh, I said Katie Dotson, so they're all out there in the chat along with uh, 53 others. So, guys, really good to have you out there. I appreciate you very much. Paul is going to be monitoring the chat. If you have any scrollers, chat. Oh, that's you, Lee. Uh, Natanic uh, River Woodcrafting with Chris Nealon. He's out there. Hi, Chris. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them out there and. Uh, We'll try our best to answer them because I'm going to tell you, I am not an expert when it comes to routers. I know how to use them. I use them, but by no means am I one of these whiz and experts at router systems or routers. So I'll just go over what, basically, I'm not going to do any a tutorial or do anything where I'm going to fire them off tonight. Number one, it's too loud in this shop. And number two, this shop is in the AC and I don't want that sawdust all over this shop. So I'll have to clean it all up. So mainly we're just going to talk about routers router bits uh, i've got a couple of tables now here i'm going to show you these are by no means expert tables but these are like your less than 100 dollars tables is what i use because once again i don't use a router that much or that often so but anyway i will go over what uh some of the stuff that i know about them and some of my panels on there i think they brought some stuff to show you all also let me push this out just a little bit i'm gonna leave my mic up here so y'all can hear me but this is one of my router tables that I use. Um, once again, nothing really, really fancy. Let me bring the camera down so y'all can see it. 
and it's not hiding behind. Here, I'm going to, how do you... Present yourself so we can hide the... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print. There you go. Thank you. I present yes. to everyone. That way, y'all should be, be hidden out there. Let me... Yeah, we can hide the participants over Yeah, let me, let me make sure the panel's hidden over here on the present yourself so y'all can see a little bit better. Just give me... There, yep, disappeared. So, all right, guys. This is one of my router tables. Now, this is a... Uh, a crash mobile router table. This is old, probably uh, six, eight, ten years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. The, the biggest problem I have around here in Florida, and I that I don't really like these kind of tables, even though they're cheap. But now a lot of your expensive tables to use these laminated press board tops. Mm -hmm. I know Craig uh, Jig has uh, a laminated top, and it's not good here in Florida in all this humidity because what ends up happening. And you can see happening here is humidity gets to it, especially where you've got cracks where these run, these runners run for this back piece run in. Humidity gets in there, and this one's already breaking off and fluffing. Here yeah. you can see, and they just don't last. Um, if I would actually prefer, and I'm, if, if I ever get a nice router, I'm going to go in the, I'm going to go in the direction of like a shaper router, a uh, big one, and with a cast iron table. So I can take care of a cast iron table and it won't rust as bad in here in Florida. But this is one of the tables I use and have used. And you can see it set up with the different feather boards. Now, what I did with this is, is I had my uh, quarter cable uh, 290 router mounted underneath here. And it was that's all this table was for was making um, picture frames. Uh, I was doing a lot of stuff for picture frames. And I would run hundreds of feet. On this little table right here uh, to make picture frames. Now, what I did was have the quarter cable router and the, the 690 strapped underneath here, which has left this and now is over there on my uh, CNC machine. I've got another one back here. I'll show you in just a minute, but it stayed underneath here. And what I used was I use these. Now, these y'all are gonna laugh. These Harbor Freight. This set of Harbor Freight face mold is face. This thing is face molding bits which is a set of face molding bits <laughs> didn't want it to do that a set of face molding bits and the one I particularly use was this one down here on the end that's not going to want to cooperate with me and stay there is it <laughs> it'll stay like that by George so it would stick underneath here like this and naturally I would run my uh, matter of fact I got a piece around here somewhere I would run my one by two down through here and it would cut this is the bit that I used and it would cut this profile uh, I think it was like this yep it would cut this profile on this uh, one by two for to make my um, picture frames and this table set up with this bit and uh, put that porta cable 690 router and it stayed like that and I run hundreds literally hundreds of feet. I would cut the uh, about eight foot sticks and I'd cut them in half at four foot and run four foot at a time through because it was just easier to work with the uh, four foot long pieces and literally run hundreds through this on this uh, Harbor Freight bit and make these. And then I came in and put it on my table saw and I would uh, do the rabbit in the back mm -hmm. on my table saw with a stack dado set. Did but, that, uh, that bit ever get uh, dull on you? Nope. I, knew, I could put it in here and put the quarter cable router on it and fire it off and start running more right now. Yeah. It's just as sharp yeah. as it can be. Now, this you is ever, a... Sorry, you ever sharpen them or... Nope. This one's never been out. sharpened. This one's never been sharpened. And it's still just as sharp as it can be. Hmm. That's what, what I said. Kind of, I mean, some of this uh, stuff. Oh, what? what kind of wood? Is, are you right? Sorry. Uh, this is just clear pine. Right. Yeah, it's Was a that, soft wood. Yeah, I'm not well, going to lie. Harbor freight, freight bits, you probably buy new bits cheaper and you can have them sharpened. Yeah. Well, now, these you could sharpen. These are designed. I could sharpen these the way that these are flat on the back. Uh, it's got that flat on the back. Uh, that wouldn't be hard to sharpen. I'd run a card, a diamond card, take this bearing off and run a diamond card through here on the back and sharpen that up real quick. You can see there. Let me, go, let me move this out of the way so I can get a little closer to you. I know that's just exactly what you want. You want me up there real close. So see how that's flat on the back? 
and that's the carbide section that sticks out here. And so it wouldn't take nothing to run a uh, one of those diamond cards on the back side of this and sharpen that up without any problem whatsoever. But this is, you can see, this is the profile that I ran that, that made this. And this, I literally run hundreds of feet of this to making picture frames for the pro, uh, projects that I were doing at the time that sold real well. And uh, now there's more than one bit. These are all different profiles in here. Matter of fact, here's the different profiles that each bit. I, these are brands I have. This is probably five, six years old. I've never used any of these three. This is the only one I've used out of that, this whole set. Um, and I've never had any problems with them. And this is called a, let me find the top. Uh, it's called the face molding bit set. So, hey, Russ, Chris Nealon wants to know if you could seal up your table with some shellac. I had it. I should actually, I did it, and it still. The mo, it, what happens is, it's the face of it stays good. It's these there's slits and the holes in it that is where the uh, water or the humidity gets down inside. Like this uh, plate here, which I don't know if I can take it off the table. Here, let me do it. If you can see, there's a slit where this guide runs to keep it straight, it runs back and forth, and it got in that slit and started working on that. Uh, and then it, around the hole for the router, it did that too. I, I don't, this here, and I'll show you the other table I've got down there. I've used this and that table more than, in, in, I mean, in my lifetime, in routers and stationary in my shop. Uh, now, I use routers on the job. We have, I have, uh, Templates for hinges for doors. So when you're going to get a brand new door and you want to put hinges, you lay out the templates and then you have the bit. You just run it around the template to cut all the hinges out for the side of the doors. I've used routers on job sites and doing stuff like that over the years, but uh, I just I'm not a. They have their place, uh, just like making this molding, and they're great in the. And I know some people do some awesome, awesome stuff. I've seen some YouTube videos. I can't think of people off the top of my head, but. They do these YouTube videos and they do great, fantastic stuff with routers. I just, I've never been one of those people. It's like, you know, I have this table here. And like I said, this table set up and it did all my uh, framework. And then, let me step out of here real quick. I've got it sitting right down here on the floor. Was that a one cut pass or did you have to make multiple passes on that? One cut. One cut. One cut. Dan Inge said that he's had been, never had a trouble with Harbor Freight bits getting dull, but he had three straight bits bust and go flying. Yeah. Well, you know, I look at it this way. I know I'm probably going to catch flack about this, but predominantly everything we buy anymore comes from China. And uh, I, that includes your bits that you buy from Rockler and a lot of other places. So uh, predominantly you're – you're buying stuff that's coming from over there. They're coming from actually the same place or the same factory or whatever. And uh, the difference is, is probably the steel's not as good as the steel that you're buying from a, uh, the specification. Let's say from a, a Mana, for instance. A Mana is a bit manufacturer. Uh, I'm sure that the steel's not as quality as an Amana bit. I'm sure the specifications for the machining is not as good as an Amana bit. And there's a lot of things. But my point is, is... I don't care if you buy an Amana bit. You can have a bad Amana bit, or you can have a bad batch of Amana bits. You can have a bad batch of Craftsman bits. You can have a bad batch of uh, Yonko bits. Everybody can have problems with their bits. So, you know, that part Maybe. about all of its junk, I just don't buy. I understand that they're not, Harbor Freight is not the quality tool that you probably want. But if you're like me, where you're going to use it on an occasion, they hold. They do work great. Now, if you're if you're a machine or you're a machine shop, if you're a shop that's running constantly routers 24 hours a day with bits and everything, yeah, I'll no doubt in my mind, Harbor Freight bits are not the ones you need to be using. You need to get a better quality of bit, no doubt in my mind. So.
and they and they paint them blue so they can pass for Rockler. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, here is the other little. Now this is not the original. This had a particle board laminated top just like the other one did, and uh, I was it started wearing out, and I was sitting there one day and I went like, "Wow, I really like this. is lightweight. It's got a switch in the front, plastic legs. I really like this thing." And I was like, um, I had done some work, construction work, and I'd saved some of these uh, Corian countertops. Uh, and I went like, I think I remember a Corian countertop out there in my uh, junk pile, so to speak, and uh, that would be perfect for the top of this to replace this. So lo and behold, I went and looked, and sure enough, this was a Corian countertop that I'd taken off of a cabinet. Now, it had been sitting in my backyard, and I did a, uh, actually, I did a video on this about taking this and replacing this and making this like this, but uh, I did a video on this. It had gotten so bad, I don't know if y'all, a lot of y'all know, but most of your coring countertops, they put particle board, glue it on the bottom, and that's what they use on the bottom. The particle board had disintegrated, so I ended up putting three-quarter inch plywood on here to screw things to, and the glue that I used, I used epoxy, and it perfect, stuck right to the the uh, this uh, Corian countertop just use plain old epoxy. Now this is the router that I told you about a little earlier. That router, that old Craftsman router, that's got to be 30 years old. My daughter is 38, and I bought it when she was like six or eight years old. So it's 30 plus years old, and it still works today. It's a fixed base. This is the uh, I, I, I kind of like it. This is the switch. Here, you have to make sure it's in the off position and you throw its chain to the bit so it locks the, the shaft for the bit. You've got a adjustable ring here. Uh, like I said, fixed, I've taken the base off of it because it's bolted directly to the table. And then this on the back side is how you adjust the bits. Now, this table is either got one of two bits in it 99.9% .9 of the time, it's either got a round over or an OG. And what I use this for is I will like doing a, be doing a project uh, like uh, this candle Scott's I made, and I want to put the OG around the edge. That's what this is for. It'll either have the OG or the round, or I want a round over, and I'll just flop this down here, run it around. That's the reason there's no fence, no place for a fence. Run it around, put the round over over it, the OG on it, and boom, off and go. All this table does. Nice, cheap little table, works perfect. Uh, this one and that one, I have a place set up for them that I can swap them out. That one, it took me 30 minutes to clean that one before I could even bring it in here to show it to you. That was on the shelf of, oh, I don't use it a whole lot. <laughs> so that one took a while to clean up. This one I use quite a bit, so this one stays clean. Russ, do you have anything like that on the side of your table saw? I see a lot of people make extensions for their saw like that. No, I don't, and I have thought about that, too. Matter of fact, this would fit in there, and I thought about before I put it on these legs, and I still can. I haven't ruined this by any means by doing what I did. I could still probably cut this and put it in there, but no, I haven't, but I thought about doing that. Um, especially yeah, since I, my I should give that to my table saw. I got, uh, uh, I think it's the, uh, oh, DeWalt. Uh, table saw, a uh, router table, and I fit perfectly into my table. Right. Table saw. So I thought about that, but like I said, uh, um, that one I haven't touched that table down there on the floor in uh, over over a year, and probably more longer than that, probably a year and a half. It's been on the like I said, the shelf that oh, I don't use you very much anymore. So that's where that's been sitting. Now, this one I use all the time if I'm going to. Uh, and I like this. It's got the front switch on it. That one does, too. But it's got the front switch on it. So the router is on. You just flip the switch. Any questions out there? Yes. Um, uh, they were talking about Corian and using it uh, to make pen blanks and everything else. And I was kind of curious. Do you have any trouble with that Corian sagging? Um, no, this is such a short piece, and then, like I said, it's uh, I've got three quarter inch plywood. I don't know if you noticed it. So pretty well, the only place it's open is right in the middle. But no, 
I haven't really had any problems with the Corian sagging. Uh, and maybe if in long, longer distances, if it's not um, braced good enough underneath, then yeah, that's a good possibility you could have that. But I haven't had any problems with the with it sagging. This is just as I can put a straight edge across there. This is just as straight as it can be. We do have one it. question about attaching a fence to that, but I would guess since you're using like an OG bit that you don't need a fence. You just no, ride along the bearing. The OG bits and the uh, Roundover bits that I use have bearings, so therefore so I do. Yeah, I don't even need a fence. I just take a. I've got one around here. Yeah, I just pretty well take the flat board, put it on there, and run it around. Russ, we had a question out in the chat a while back ago. It was about YouTube videos for sharpening bits. Have you, uh, anybody seen some good ones? Uh, I have, but right now I, I I could probably run across them and put them in the information underneath this video for y'all to go over and look at. But there are some of them out there. Most of your bits, and I'll show you that. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. Uh, if they're flat on the back side of the carbide, you can get a diamond. Some of those diamond cards. Yeah, that's what Stumpy Nubs does. Is he gets those ones that are like credit card size. Yeah, and these then, are the, uh, these are a little bit big, but they are the diamond cards. These come from Harbor Freight, by the way. As yep. if you didn't know that I buy stuff from Harbor Freight. Uh, but you get these diamond cards, and they come in the different grits. This particular one, I think, is uh, 180. Yeah, I took the 220 or the 260 and the two or the 360 out of this package. But uh, let me get another bit real quick. It's not going to be easy to use. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah, so what you could do is, let's get up here again. This has a flat. Now, you might want to consider moving the bearing, but you don't really have to. But it has a flat back on it. So let me run this around. So what you're going to want to do is, if you take the bearing off, where you can get all the way up to the top. And this is just, it's got a little Allen screw in it. It pops right off without any problem. And that'll give you access all the way up to the top. And you just run this on your card stock a few times. You can put a, I've got some honing oil. Uh, honing oil is like three in one oil. Three in one oil will work good. I believe I've got some three in one oil up here I can show you. And you know, a lot of times just cleaning the bit makes a world of difference. It does. Yes, it does. But get you some three in one oil run on here. I've got some actually honing oil for your honing. Uh, stuff. Um, these are. This is just a real thin, lightweight oil. It's all three-in-one oil is. Oil is oil. Okay. It's just your different viscosities and stuff. And yes, they have some different mixtures, but oil is oil. You just want a real thin, lightweight oil to help break, uh, help help lubricate this when you're sharpening and running it back and forth. And that's all you got to do. Just a few strokes back and forth on this, uh, and you can sharpen these right up. I sharpen my carbide tips on my uh, turning tools on these cards. That's the reason that the other two are not in here because they're out there by my lathe. But uh, but that's all you got to do to dress, dress dress these up. This will work for this. Now, this. Any more questions, real quick, before I move on? No, we're good right now. Okay. Uh, now this, I tested out, or I bought the other day, and I tested one of them out. Instead of Ryobi bits. Uh, Bottom at uh, my favorite store, Big Box Orange. Uh, better, a lot better than that blue piece of crap place. Uh, but I bought these just to try them. Uh, they're Ryobis, uh, and they're painted blue to match Rocklers. <laughs> so, and I put one of the, uh, these are roundovers. Yeah, I put this one in, and I run, run some stuff through with it. It cut perfect. Uh, no tear out, no nothing. It worked great. I... Run probably, matter of fact, I stuck it in this one just as a test and ran it, you know, six, eight, ten different things through it, and it worked great. So uh, it comes a little extra bearing and an Allen screw to put on there. Comes with your different size roundovers. And this was fairly cheap. I think I only paid like 30 bucks for this. So not an expensive set. And, uh, and once again, I'm sure that it's not going to be um, the best set on the block, but I just... I seen them, they were cheap, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna grab a set of those and keep them up on the shelf. And I, if this one of these wears out, I'll I'll have a replacement. And so uh, I bought that. Now this set here, 
I've had this set for 20 plus years. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of bits missing because they broke or are no longer any good. This bit that's in here now is one of these that came out of this. And uh, these are the bits that you use in the um, that template thing that I was telling you about to cut the hinges more the hinges the mortise for the uh, hinges and doors. This is like one of the bits that you, you would use for that. That fits down in that just cuts the hinges out. Is that it's, like a dovetail? Yeah, it's similar to like a dovetail. It's similar to like a dovetail, but I know that because I've used it before to do a lot. Of, it's a template. It's as long as a door. It's got the three places, and you can adjust it for the different heights and the different positions, and you lock it onto the edge of the door, and then you just take your router and stick it in there and route her out with this bit, yeah, all three holes, and then pull it off, and then boom, pop your hinges in there. Now, if you have square hinges, naturally this cuts a little round corner, and they have round hinges on the, and square hinges. If you have square, you just take your chisel and cut little corners out real quick, and it works perfect. That's what that, one looks, that one looks kind of weird because the fluting on it, Yep, it goes like off that. at an angle instead of just straight up and down. Yeah, but it's specifically for that template to yeah. cut the hinges. Here's the other one. Here's an, and matter of fact, this one I had to replace it because I burned it up. I used it so much. You can see there's a little black. Yeah, it got black. Mm -hmm. So now this is an old set. This is a flush trim bit here, and what you would use that for is for like laminates. So I could put like, uh, for instance, let me back out here away. I could run my uh, uh, Flamica out on this at the top of my uh, cabinet countertop that I was going to make. I could run the Flamica over, and after it dried, then I could come back and put this in my router, and this would follow the edge of the uh, countertop and cut the Flamica off nice and smooth for me. So that's that's a flush edge trim bit. Uh, like I said, some of these bits are not in here. This is actually the uh, dovetail bit. Mm -hmm. That's actually a dovetail bit. And then here you have your OG bit. That one's seen a lot, a lot of use. So this set's got to be 20, 25 years old. I've had it for around. So uh, uh, this is a camphor. This makes your campers. And what that is, is basically, if you can see on here, the little picture of the camphor. Basically, it's almost like a uh, 45 off on the edge on that one. I can't if you don't it. use that dovetail bit that much, why don't you send that to Donald so he's going to have to stop doing them by hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. But hey, I, got, I got one of those bits. <laughs> <laughs> It's easier to do it by hand and to match them up with that router. <laughs> the Jeff Robinson, Jeff Robinson wants to know if you're using low cost bits in your router, what are you using in your CNC? Uh, I do use low cost bits and plus a manis. I use some manis too. All of my okay. straight flute bits, uh, straight up and down bits, uh, are either Harbor Freight or cheap router. But here, I'll show you. Did he say Lowe's bits? <laughs> I thought so. Don't get him to go down. He's going to turn his show off. want to uh, make a little bet like Shane didn't lose? Because I did not say that word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for instance, this is a Harbor Freight bit, and I use it in my CNC. Mm -hmm. But this is to do roughing passes. Like if I'm going to go in there and do a roughing pass and gouge stuff out real quick, and I'm not too concerned about if it's really – nice and smooth and even or whatever because it's just a rough and pass i'll throw them this is a harbor freight matter of fact these two bits came out of that package from harbor freight Oops. <laughs> i think i got backwards or maybe not backwards so this is Harbor Freight, and you said, "Yeah, do you? What do you use in your CC?" I use them there too. So you do you know. know after, you make, after you make a little holder for your bits, you can throw those other plastic packages away. You don't need to keep. Yeah. Them. <laughs> I just happened to, when I bought that package the other day. I just happened to have that laying over there on the shelf. 
Now this here, this is a, a very expensive one sixteenth uh, yes, a mana, is. a mana ball nose. Now if I'm going to do like detail work or stuff, yeah, I got some of my manas and some I nice bits in here. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, that's a nice a mana upcut bit for my CNC. Uh, this is a keyhole bit. I think this came from, I couldn't find anywhere else. I bought it when I was up teaching one of the classes at Rockler in Orlando. I couldn't seem to find one, and they had one up there, so I bought it and brought it home. I think this is a Rockler bit. I got mine like that at Sears. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've got <clears throat> some Harbor Freights in here. These here came out. If you'll look and see, that's gray. That is my 90-degree uh, V-bit came out of this package right here. Mm -hmm. And when I took it out of this part right here, matter of fact, it's uh, right here. This OG that's in here is actually a Harbor Freight. Don't go in there. There's the place it went. This was brand new. I'd never used it before until I put it into my CNC. This is 25 years old, and this bit had never been used. <laughs> so, And I don't think this camper bit... If you'll look at it real close, brand new, never been used, 25 years old. So that shows you how much I, some of the bits I use. But this is brand thinking new uh, that I put in here. And so is this one. Uh, what does he call this? A ball nose bit, I believe. Oh, boy. That's brand spanking new that came out of this kit, never been used, 25 years old. Is that a cove bit? Cove bit might be here. It's got the slot in here, so. That is. Core box is what they call it. Yeah. Core box. Yeah, it goes right in that slot. Right there, and they're calling it a core box. So, um. Uh, yeah, some of these bits I've never used. Now, that's that. Like I said, this is a... Uh, uh, okay, so we talked about bits real quick. Uh, oh, one more set. We'll talk about. I bought this set. Um, and it went in that table down there for a while to do uh, tongue and groove. Now, this is a... How you pronounce that? Yonko? Yonko? Yeah. Yoniko, Yoniko, Yoniko. Yeah, Yoniko. Yeah. Yoniko. That's how you pronounce it. That's how we do it. I bought this, and uh, this is brand the new. General consensus. <laughs> I did this with. Uh, I used this to do tongue and grooves on the uh, uh, shelf, uh, bathroom shelf, ladder shelf that I built for my daughter. I tongue and grooved all the one, uh, the boards that I put together to make them hold better, and they uh, moisture and glued them. And I tongue and grooved them with this set right here. And I use that uh, porticator port cable uh, 690 router I saw that set on Amazon not too long ago I was looking yeah for, for and that's bit. where I got this from on Amazon they had such a it was such a fantastic price that I just couldn't pass it up what did they want for it I think I only paid like 60 bucks for this yeah, oh wow was, yeah I like that yeah yeah I think it was like I think it was 68 they had it on a sale on Amazon and I bought it so uh but I've used this, that just those two bits to do the tongue groove on that ladder shelf, and it's been sitting on my, uh, sitting ever since. So I haven't used that. But uh, these were really, these cut fantastic. I mean, they did a fantastic on that job on that tongue groove. And I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of good uh, things about these too. So those. Now, one thing um, before we actually, I got to show you a couple of things. We get any questions out there? Nope. Nope. Well, they were wondering about, you being in Lowe's with a trench coat on or something. <laughs> and sunglasses. Don't forget the sunglasses. And sunglasses. <laughs> and uh, trash, your trash to my treasure says, boy, for someone who doesn't do a lot of routing, you sure got a lot of bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why. Uh, they're Moon, still sharp. That's why they're still sharp. Yeah. Ken <laughs> Moon says, damn, Russ, do you even router, bro? <laughs> Yes, I router, but like I said, uh, most of that down there making the um, 
uh, picture frame material and the round over OGs on this. That's kind of like my limit. Other than now that I have the CNC, yes, it does a lot of stuff for me. Hey, um, yes. Uh, Thomas asked earlier, what do you use for surfacing your CNC table? What do I use for surfacing? I used the, uh, what I used when I surfaced it. I used uh, that half inch. Uh, half inch in diameter, quarter shank, uh, um, Harbor Freight bit. <laughs> That's what I surfaced the table with. It worked. And it yeah, worked. I used one I used one like that to flatten my CNC table out with too. Yep. And it didn't have any problem. It worked perfect. So never had a problem or an issue with it. Okay, so and I've got and yeah. Let me, since I'm at this and we're still talking about bits now, this is the half inch collet uh, for uh, that quarter cable L, uh, 690. That's the half inch. This is the quarter inch pilot. And then I order special order this and I will have to get, I don't have the information with me, but if you want this PM me or put the question down in the YouTube section and I will find it and I will get it to you. But I am even ordered the one eight inch for that quarter cable. And it will fit. These are one eight inch bits that I ordered in case I ever wanted to do really small engraving and I can use it with this one eighth inch collet on oh, my little bits will work with that too. Yep. So these are all little one eighth inch bits that I purchased what, for. What size router do you have in your CNC? This is Porter Cable six ninety. I think that's about a horse and a half router, isn't it? Uh, a horse two? and three quarter I believe. Horse and three quarter. That looks like what I got. Hang on a minute. Yeah, this is. Oh, this is an eight eight ninety one. Yeah, that one's a, that's a bigger one. Than this. Yeah, it's, yeah, it weighs more than I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like a two. That's saying a lot. Two and, a half, and I think that's a two and a half horse. Yeah, something that's big. Anyway, this is a brand spanking. I just took it out of the box tonight. Uh, it's been sitting on my shelf. Uh, this is the backup to the one the porta cable that's on my CNC that is about. 12, 15 years old uh, that was in that table down there to do the um, uh, picture frames. I took it when I got my CNC, I took it off that table and put it on the CNC and been using it. And then I was worried about because it's so old that if it would crap out and I was in the middle of a project. So I went down and bought this one brand spanking new. I mean, literally. But he still has the sales ticket. Just. Took it out of the box before the show and put it up here <laughs> to show y'all. But it's been sitting on the, if this is just in case something happens to that one. This is, I've got the, the backup. And then if I ever wanted to uh, run some more picture frames or something on that, I didn't want to have to pull that router off. My CNC to put in that table that I just showed you a minute ago. So I've got this one I could put on that table and run more picture frames if I wanted to. So it's a combination. Mm. So, but and then, like I said, we'll go back to these are some really, really small bits for engraving for the uh, the tapered mm -hmm. bit for engraving. Uh, this is a ball nosed. So these strictly, this stays over here in this little thing, this little caddy stays over here in my C, with my CNC table. Hey, Chris Nealon asked, is uh, anybody using Eagle Bits? Says I've heard of them. a lot, but the, he wants to know if they're any good or not. Yeah, I've, I've, heard used, of them. I've used them, and uh, I've never had a problem with them, and I also use uh, MLCS Bits a lot, and I really like them. Yeah. Okay, that was the next question <laughs> from uh, Jeff Robinson. Okay, um, let's go over, since we're talking about stuff like bits and stuff, one more thing on uh, this is that, uh, uh, Shane, recognize these? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I won these from uh, uh, last year when Shane 
had a uh, Mother's Day challenge. Mother's Day contest, yeah. Yep, I won these from him on the Mother's Day. Now, this is a real, this can be used for more on the router, more than on the router. Uh, this can be used for other, like if you're setting your depth of your table saw uh, blade or whatever. But these are actually depth gauges. And I'll pull this back a little bit. Uh, for your router, and they come in the different increments. Let's start down here. Uh, this is half inch. So this is half inch here, and this is half inch on this end. But for setting your router depth, what you would do is just set this on your table like this, and then you would bring your router up underneath to the to it touches the bottom part of this, and that would be one half of an inch. Oh, that's cool. Half inch. Yeah. So I, I've used these a lot in all, uh, Shane, uh, especially with this setup here. Yeah, I can just set it on there and... So I've used this a lot, not with the roundover bits naturally, but with some other bits a couple of times that I've used it. But it goes all the way up to from one half an inch. And then you've got, this is a half inch here, so you can use this for uh, different settings on other things too. Um, I use, how I use this is I bring it across because I just want this uh, bottom of the roundover bit to touch the bottom of this to it be level with the table. So I'll use this to bring it across and move this up until it touches the bottom of this. And that tells me that that bit is level with the table now to do my round over. Yeah, also, actually, that what, spot is used for in case on, on the table saw. You're going to do a half inch dado or a half inch rabbit. If that will fit into that uh, rabbit, then it fits. It, that's what it is. Thank you very much. That's right. That is what that is for. And it goes all the way up to a half inch uh, down to one eighth of an inch <laughs> and these are really really awesome they're made of a, a solid aluminum so it even gives you a little decimal equivalency so this is a 0.125 for eighth of an inch uh, so that would be 0.5 for the half inch all the way through so we've, I've used these and these are very 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 nice so I appreciate that from Shane, you are. Shane and Shelley that this is from Craig a couple people want to know what those are called um router setup bars yeah router setup bars <laughs> router thank you <laughs> i didn't know what they're called i just know i got them for a <laughs> they're called doohiggies <laughs> yeah. you could use those on your table saw too though yes that's what i said i use them on my table saw i actually have used them on my table saw more than i have the router table for this depth set the depth of the saw blade so uh that that's about that uh, any more questions out there? The Tannic River Woodcrafting with Chris Nealon. I installed the Incra uh, just when lift. Great. Yeah, I thought about, like I said, once again, if I ever go the route of getting a router table, like a nice one, I'm going to go uh, to a shaper router. And the reason being is I want a cast iron table. Uh, matter of fact, and you're going to laugh at this, is I have looked at really, really closely the Harbor Freight. Uh, shaper because it will go all the way down to quarter inch bits uh, and it's got a cast iron table and it's got very good reviews the biggest problem they say is the fence in the back is because it's in two pieces of line in it but they've got some things that you can I've read that you can do to solve that problem whatever on that fence but the rest of them are great reviews on that table so I think if I ever decided to go to a heavy or a fixed base that's what I would get because that's the shaper which would take these bigger bits uh, to do shaping for the um, picture frames that I do, but also you can use it as a router. as It'll go down to a quarter inch, call it for quarter inch bits. So that's the one I'm looking at. Or something similar to that would be what I'm interested in with a cast iron table. Or with a table that doesn't have that uh, melamine crap that plates off. Uh, one of the things that I haven't done yet or use yet is Rockler sent me these and I've got to use these and get a video out on now these are uh, corner radius routing templates now these yeah. are pretty cool uh, and I just took these literally out of the box before the show there's still the plastic is still in the box so they sent me these the other day to uh, test and try and what these are they're different Templates, you've got your small radius corners, uh, works all the way up. Do they have the sizes on them? Huh? Do they have the sizes on it? Yeah, it's got, this is one-eighth, seven-eighths, okay. three-quarter, five-eighths. 
I on the different corners. Yep, yeah, this is three eighths, half, one eighth, and one quarter. And then this is one and a half, one and three quarters, two inch, and one and one quarter. And then this is your little plate that goes in these little slots. I've never used this, so bear with me here. I haven't even read the directions. <laughs> Just I really don't know. Look at the yeah, I'm going. I'm winging. I'm winging this. Okay, <laughs> but uh, this little thing here's your plate here. What you do is put it on. Let's say I want the two inch. Uh, I just lock that down on there, and then I take my piece and I put it on the corner. Oh yeah. And I pull these up where these tabs are catching the corners, and that gives me that right there. Okay. Now I wouldn't. I would not run this whole thing if I was going to do this. I would take if it was me, and I've never used these before. I would take a pencil, and I would mark this, and then I would take this to my saw or something and cut as much of this off of it as I could. And then you could come back because I, I mean, the only way I know of doing this is one of was one of these. Um, where did I put you at? Flush trim bits. So you would stick this in here, and then what this bearing is going to do is it's going to ride this black piece here, and it's going to cut this the exact radius of this black piece. It'll ride this just like this all the way around. I've been doing it the hard way for so long. Yep. So, uh, and I just don't feel like I would want to try to whack on this um, big piece here uh, back and forth on this. Uh, I think it'd be better to take some of it off. Take two seconds to put it on your um, miter saw and whack that corner off and then you can come back and smooth that off and so you've got your different radiuses all the way down to a quarter of an inch that this would follow this um you'd wear the edge off on that bit if you try if you had to do that many times yeah that's what i'm thinking so you'd be better off just cutting some of it off and just using this and this is for, and i'm sure this is for making a precision radius around that corner so I would get rid of the waste, but well, that's what that's for. And uh, just a real quick thing, when you're using a router, you always, the rotation of the bit uh, is going to be, uh, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? I don't even remember. But anyway. I believe it's counterclockwise. Okay, counterclockwise. That's what, I'm on the back side of this table. That's what's going to be confused. But anyway, so when you're feeding this, you don't want to go with the rotation of the bit because that's going to first you can but it's going to have a tendency to snatch this sucker right out of your hand and send it flying down the room because it's it's turning you know it's pulling it in the direction as you go so anytime you want to do that you want to come in from the opposite direction and push it in and take your time and push it forward along the opposite direction of the bit so you want to work, and that's the way you cut. If you think about it, when the table saw, when it's cutting, it's cutting down, pulling the piece down, going into it, down toward the table. I mean, they're different. I know. Maybe that's not a good analogy. But, but my point is, is you don't want to go with the direction of the bit. If you go with the direction of the bit, that sucker is going to take off. It's going to be, I've done it before just playing around. And let me tell you, it's with a larger piece where I didn't have to worry about my hands, and it'll want to take it, snatch it out of your hand, and, it's, and it, and it, you can't get the nice cut on it as you're doing that, so make sure you're working with against it. You're cutting. Does that make well, that's, sense? That's how I check which direction it goes. If the wood goes flying, I know I need to come in from the other direction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, look at which way it is turning. So, and I, and I, I, you know, let's plug this real quick. And go in the wrong direction. Show us it's shooting off. Yeah. <laughs> right in your camera. Okay, so it's turning. 
in this direction, which would be counterclockwise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was turning off. I said I didn't want to get sawdust all over my shop. But So, and but like I said, I'm by no means in an and I am I an expert. I just know that if you go in the opposite direction, it has a tendency, especially if you don't have a real good hole on it, to want to snatch it out of your hands. Kind of like the uh, kickback on a table saw is what it reminds me of. So, it's scary doing there. Uh, been there, done that. Yeah, I mean, and I made that mistake. I've been in a hurry, reached out and grab a hold and not paid attention, just stuck it in, started pulling, and that sucker want to. Pull away from them, like whoa, whoa, whoa. So, and the, and you get a better cut, a smoother cut by going in the opposite direction. Also, when you're doing that, all right. Uh, so I've covered that. Let's go over real quick about the different about the different types of routers. And guess what, guys? Harbor Freight router. So now. These are the uh, three routers that I have in my shop. That down, this one, oh, this one underneath here, this is a fixed base also. So it's basically like this Porter cable. It's just Craftsman. Uh, the Porter cable over there is the identical one this. But the difference being is these are fixed base. In other words, you lock this thing in through the depth or whatever you want to cut. You bring it up to it. Or if you're going to do a plunge, you're going to have to sit it down like that into the area. But you bring it up to it and you use it this way. This is what you call a fixed base. Where this one is uh this is my chicago electric uh okay. from harbor freight this is a uh i gotta remember how to use this thing the release is on the uh, other lock. side it's that yellow ah, there it is. Okay. see i don't use them that much i told you there you go this is what you would call a plunge base and what that's for is if you need to go to an area that's out here in the center you can have the depth preset here on this so it will only go so deep when you push it down. And you can go out into the center of a board or whatever and then push this down and then do that area out into the center. And you can lock it once you get it down there if you, if you need to. And do that little area, release it, and then you can come right back up. So good for making maneuvers uh, interior and different cuts like that. And you can use it. It'll plunge down on the edge of something also. You can use it to run around the edge. Yeah, they work. They work out good for making uh, mortises in doors, or you know, <laughs> in like a door or whatever. Yes. So that's that's the main two difference between this fixed base. It will not go up and down like this. And and you see, I don't use it that much. Uh, Paul had to point out oh, the locks over here. So uh, where'd you get I, that at? This I purchased. This at Harbor Freight. All right, everybody, do what you said. But. How much, how much are they going to pay you for each one? <laughs> I know. I know. But, uh, and also, this is variable speed. This is a variable speed router. Uh, I I don't need this kind of router that often. Uh, and I can get by with this. I'll use this two or three times, maybe a year, and if that much. And I'm not going to go out and spend $300 on a plunge router. That I'll use two or three times, maybe a year, and it'll sit on a shelf for five years and not use it again. And when this thing will work just as good for those two or three times that I need it, and it'll sit on that shelf for five years, and I'll go pick it off one day and use it again. So, I mean, I'm not going to spend that kind of money on something when this will work just as fine. Am I stupid enough to think that if I put this uh, and used it on a daily basis, routing eight, nine hours, ten hours a day, that this thing's going to hold up? No. That's not what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to use it probably two or three, four times. It'll go on a shelf and it'll sit there. Matter of fact, I've used it three times and it's been sitting on the shelf for three months. So, and then when I need it, I've got it. Now, the I, I, I was just picking, man. I did. I know. <laughs> my tools, they're all about <laughs> armor. The difference is now, I will show you the difference is now on the CNC and on this. I bought a nice, these were one of the leading routers, Porta cables. These 690s are a beast. They last forever. They got plenty of power. Uh, they're great routers. Dave Gatton uses, I know a bunch of people that uh, live off of, or 
rec highly recommend port of cable yeah I went and spent the extra couple of bucks because I know this is going to sit in that CNC and this might be cutting for four or five six hours at a time and I don't think that one it, it's not a fixed base by the way but that one would ever Chagahog or electric would ever put up with what this thing is going to do for me so when it comes to something like the CNC or putting it into that um, thing to cut uh, picture frames with I'm going to go because I know I'm going to be running hundreds of board feet through that. I'm going to go with a better router. So that's the difference. And then this is what we would call a trim router. A uh, little uses quarter inch bits and very lightweight. Now this one, they make electric ones. This one just happens to be a, a, a rigid uh, 18 volt battery. So uh, uh, this one works very, very well. And this is what we would call a trim router. Uh, trim routers, uh, from my understanding, were designed and made to uh, uh, for uh, lightweight, like trim jobs, like we were talking about running an, uh, a flush trim cut bit to cut laminates. It's something that you don't need a big heavy-duty router to do that. You're just cutting the flamica around the edge. This will work perfect for that. Uh, small jobs. Uh, this will be surprised how much this can do, but that's what these were made for. Lightweight, easy to handle, like especially on cabinet work when you're going up and down on the side of a cabinet and even flesh trim the uh, Formica off or, or doing something cabinet work. That's These trim routers were designed for that kind of uh, situation. Work very good, uh, very good routers. Uh, this one just happens to be a rigid, so I've got my gamut here. So now somebody mentioned in the chat that uh, Harbor Freight carries a trim router and it's yes. like 22 bucks yep. and uh, I've got one of those and it's not a bad little trim router for you know for 22 bucks the throwaway router the, um, yeah this was actually uh, given to me and so that's the reason that I have it so uh, and I appreciate uh, the person I don't want to mention their names was but anyway, if they want me to tell it, I will, but then they'll tell me later on. You could have said my name. I'll say, okay, well, next time if anybody asks me, I'll do it. But anyway, but this was given to me by a friend of mine to use and uh, or to have. And uh, and I and it works great. I've used it two or three times just playing around. Actually, I put that uh, round bit, what do we call that thing? Uh, I remember well, the name of it now. Well, I call it a ball nose bit, but a bowl dish bit. It looks like a cone round. bit. Uh, cove. That's what it looks like, but they call it a core box. Yeah, a core box, but I put that in there and played around with it a little while. And I, I'd recommend if you're not sure how much you'd use a router, it, I'd check out pawn shops and stuff because I got my Ryobi from pawn shop. I kept on watching it and never sold, and I, I finally talked them down to giving it to me for 25 bucks. Yeah. So, so where's the red router from? This is Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric. Everybody do your thing. So, um, yeah, I've got the gamut here. I've got a rigid uh, port of cable and a Chicago electric. But I needed a plunge router for the job that I was doing, uh, and uh, I was slotting some 4 before's to put a 2 before in it. And it was simpler to me to take the little jig, and this uh, I had, I put the, um, what do you call it? Hold on one second. <laughs> a real worker, woodworker would use a, 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 a mallet and a chisel, just saying. Yeah, and I'm not a real woodworker. <laughs> What's your take on that, Chris Ahern? <laughs> a comment? I don't even have, I don't even over here now. I know I've got them, I just can't find them. We could use a commercial break right now. Anyway, what do you call those stupid, I've got a set of them, the collets. This ain't been a commercial? The, yeah. These are the, <laughs> you know, the collets that go in here that have the different openings for the bit that's just where the bit fits through. Oh, the bushings? Bushings, yeah, collets, bushings or whatever. Yeah, I put one in here uh, for this half inch uh, flush bit. And what I would, and I built my little jig, and it would just lock onto the four before uh, with a clamp, and I could just take this and push it down, and 
move back and forth, push a little deeper, move back and forth, and cut that place for that slot for that two before to fit in. I, I took that jig, moved it to, so I did it on six two before or six four befores, had the slots cut. Just I'm talking about in 10, 15 minutes, I had all the slots cut in them, and boom, off we go. So that's where this came in handy, and I needed it for a couple of other things. And the that's when I bought this. And it'll sit on the shelf. You know, I know somebody who was it sit out there for a guy that don't claims he don't do a lot of routers. I like got yeah, well, <laughs> it's nice to have the tools that you need available here if you need them. And that's the way I. If I need a tool, I'm the type of person I just go out and buy it. I mean, I don't now. You will see, like I said, if I know good and well, um, I've got an angle drill that is uh, probably 10 years old, a 3 8 inch angle drill, and uh, I bought from Harbor Freight 10 years ago. I needed to bore a hole, side hole, and I had no way of getting that hole in there and, a, and for a couple of cabinets in the back of a couple of cabinets for a couple of things. That was the only drill that fit. I ran to Harbor Deep Freight, bought that drill, come built board those three holes with that drill it's sitting over the shelf 10 years and i haven't ever used it again <laughs> with the router bits a lot of times you can catch the sets you may only need that one bit for this time but it may cost 17 bucks and you can get a whole set for 25. Yes. you might as well go ahead and get the whole set <laughs> yes so um roomies garage chris glitzo's out there how you doing chris uh, howdy, Chris. Al Forte's out there. Um, I'm looking over there. I don't see any other questions. Anybody got any other questions? I like I said, I don't in any way, shape, or form to be a a professional. I just wanted to basically touch base about routers and the bits and. I'm nope. keeping my I'm keeping my question myself from now on. I I may already not get invited back. <laughs> no, you didn't. That wasn't you didn't uh, upset me or or bother. Let me take myself off where y'all can be seen now, since we're pretty well winded down. So the the people out there can see y'all's beautiful faces. Whoever's on the panel. So. Russ Mark asked if uh, do you clean your bits or your collets. Uh, I clean my bits, yes, on occasion. And how I clean my uh, router bits is I usually get a jar and uh, put some lacquer thinner in the jar and drop the bits in the lacquer thinner. I usually use a glass jar, so I don't have to worry about the lacquer thinner melting plastic. Uh, I save a. I like. I love uh, Clawson or kosher bit pickles. They come in those perfect jars. They're about this big around, about this tall, with a wide mouth. And so I save those pickle jars and pour me about a couple of inches of lacquer thinner in there, drop those bits in there, put the cap on it, set it off on the side, and let it sit there for two or three days. Then when I come back, I take them out, uh, take a cloth, wipe them off. That lacquer thinner will eat all that crap, the residue from the uh, wood on them, and wipe them down real good, uh, shoot them with a shot of uh, WD-40, and we're good to go. I mean, Especially in the bearing, I might throw up. And if they're the round bearing top, uh, that's the reason I got this three-in-one oil. I'll drop some three-in-one oil in it because it will take the uh, oil out of those bearings. So you have to oil them up a little bit too. Hey, Russ, that, if you got just a minute, I was going to show you a set of bits I got here. Sure. I don't know if you can. On. I don't know if you can. Lock on you real quick. All right. Go ahead. I don't know if you can see these or not. Yep. But uh, what these are is a, a set of plywood bits okay and they're undersized like a three-quarter inch is undersized so that it fits three-quarter inch plywood and a half inch is undersized so that it fits half inch plywood and then there's one for quarter inch so if you're going to do a dado where you want plywood to fit into it you use that and that plywood fits just as nice and tight as could be cool and uh, i got these from grizzly and they were only like thirteen dollars for the three bits. Question: That's Are cheap. the cutting ability of those bits just because they're plywood bits any different than a regular? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is there an yeah. angle or something? No, nope. they they're, they're, they cut the same, and uh, the only difference is they're undersized a little bit. Okay. 
So like a, if you cut a three-quarter inch dado on a piece of plywood and put a three-quarter piece of plywood into it, it's a snug fit. Right. Exactly. Now what, what, I, what, what I do to keep anything from, from uh, chipping out or anything is, is uh, I'll put a piece of masking tape or painter's tape on there and then run my dado and then take the tape off. That way you don't get any chip out or anything. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because if you run a regular stock three-quarter inch bit, uh, thinking you're going to put that plywood in there, three-quarter inch plywood, it's going to be a bigger slot than uh, the actual plywood. Because I got news for you, people. Go measure your, go and measure your stuff. I went in the harbor, harbor freight. They got harbor freight on the mine. Uh, I went into uh, Home Depot a while back and picked up a few two befores, and I happened to have my tape measure with me, and I measured them. And like out of like five two befores, there wasn't a one of them that was actually an inch and a half. They were all about a sixteenth inch shy of being an inch and a half, and I'm thinking to myself, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and that's not the only, that's not the only thing I found. Uh, I was doing a job with some crown mold, uh, not crown mold, uh, chair rail. I was doing a job putting some chair rail up, and I cut the pieces in the corner, and I couldn't get them to fit. And I'm sitting there scratching my head, wondering what in the world. I went back and cut them again, couldn't get them to fit. And I'm thinking, like, have I just forgotten all how to do stuff anymore? Went back and I got to look and I held up the, the crown mold and I had like five or six sticks of crown mold I had. Three of them were different. They were cut just, they were just a little bit off or a little bit different. And I was like, I, you got to be kidding me. So I went back and took them back and uh, raised cane at them and everything. And we went to the pile and I had a hard time finding three to match the pieces that I already had up. And come to find out what happens is, and Home Depot is not the only one that does this. I know the big blue store does too. Is they'll have they'll hire a company to run their moldings, and their only contract is only for X amount of time. So let's say that they have a contract with Donald, Donald's uh, woodworking, and Donald for this year contracts to do the woodworking. Well, they've got stockpile of moldings there. Well, then they come along and they want Paul's woodworking to cut next year. That Paul's giving them a better price. Well, just because they're supposed to be the same moldings, Paul's woodworkers are not setting up the um, machines to cut that exactly as the way Donald's woodworkers does, so they're a little bit off. So now you've got Donald's uh, moldings in one stack along with Paul's moldings, and they're off a little bit. They're not just exactly the same because somebody setting up the machines didn't set them up just right. And then you're here trying to put these things up, and they're not fitting because... They're not, it's not the same. So. This show is brought to you by Harbor Freight. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I get, a, I hear so much flack from people. And I'm going to do a video on Harbor Freight tools that you should buy. And pretty much you can buy them. Uh, now, they've got some stuff in there that I, you know, I've looked at and went like, now that's junk. Uh, but, you know, um, if you're not well, since you do all of this routing business, well, Chris Frisco asked earlier, what router would you prefer? If I was going to buy a router that I was going to use on a consistent basis, so to speak, all the time, uh, on a daily basis, I would go to something like a Porter Cable or a better brand of router. Uh, uh, Porter Cable makes. Uh, um, what do you call these? Plunge. Plunge routers. Thank you. Plunge. Uh, Plunge. Uh, Plunge. 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 Yeah. So uh, uh, Porter Cable makes these, so I would go to a better type router. If you're talking about something like this, for instance, when I knew I bought it, I was going to use it maybe a half a dozen times. It's going to sit over there on the shelf. Uh, uh, you know, I got this for like, I used my 20% off coupon, caught it on sale, ended up paying like 50, 60 bucks, I think it was, for it. You know, I'm going to use it those times. I did those 404s and a couple of other jobs, and it's set up on the shelf now for three months. Then I'm going to buy this. I mean, it cuts every bit as good as this porter cable. Uh, it will do the I mean, just as good a job. It's just probably going to last uh, a, a month or two cutting on it every day, every day, every day, wear out where this will just keep right on going. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a porter cable 690, and I uh, – ordered a, uh, a porter cable plunge base for it yeah and i forget how much it cost it wasn't cheap but 
then I can put my the body for the 690 right in the plunge base and got a plunge router. Right. I think that I've looked at those two, and I think that's probably about 150 bucks just for that plunge base. Yeah, it's not cheap, but uh, boy, it makes a nice router. And usually, and it, so you're talking about 150 dollars for the plunge base. This router here runs usually between 120 and 150 bucks. You can usually catch it on sale for around 120 on Amazon and a few other places. I've seen it cheaper than that. I've seen it as low as 109. <clears throat> but for an average, 120 to 150 bucks for this, and then you add another 100, almost 150, if I'm not mistaken, from that punch base. Now you've got 300 dollars tied up in this. I don't even <laughs> want to tell you what I paid for mine, guys. <laughs> You'll reach to the screen and shoot me. I got it at a uh, like the the wife of a guy who died right after he built his shop up. You got it there with you? So I, <laughs> right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice port of cable. Oh, Jim just <laughs> he it's showed awesome. his router and boom, he's died. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, if you're out there, come back. I didn't mean to scare y'all. There he is. Oh, that's okay. I I uh I think I moved the uh thing over my keyboard and hit a hit a key. Okay. Here's the here's the regular base for it. And then I got this oh, whole rack for oh twenty five bucks. Oh man. <laughs> and there, I got another rack That's like great. this behind me with quarter inch bits in it. Hold that router back up because we didn't get to see that. Oh it's a it's a six uh, where's it? 891. 891. Yeah, that's yeah. a beast. So here's wow. it's got the plunge base on it. So that is now that is a nice router. Yeah, it's a sweetheart. Yeah, that's a nice router. I, yeah, it looks so much like my Craftsman. The handles, everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, made uh, by the same people. <laughs> you know, Craftsman for years. Uh, uh, that router that's on that table I showed you that's down there. Or no, it's this one. Yeah, this Craftsman right here. I remember buying it, uh, and going into the store and buying it. Craftsman Sears in in Lakeland, North Lakeland. Uh, I remember buying it. That and I, my daughter was like six or eight years old when I bought it. Uh, and I've used that thing all these years. I mean, uh, it still works, still great, no problems. Uh, I it's you know fixed base like this, so therefore that's the reason I stuck it up underneath there, so I don't have to change the depth. Once I set the depth for like a round over, it pretty well stays there until I, I change the bit to an OG or whatever, and I set the depth, and it'll stay that way for a long period of time. Perfect. See, a craftsman used to make some dang good tools. They're just like everybody else. They've uh, China's making their stuff now, and they're not paying the quality or uh, that they're getting out of the tools and you're just having problems. Actually, Sears got bought by the same people that own Kmart now, so that's what yeah. you're getting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they sold the Craftsman brand to... Who the heck was it? I think Stanley? they sold it. They sold it to Stanley Black & Decker, which owns 90% yes. of the tool tools in the United States. Yeah. Stanley Black & Decker owns DeWalt. They own... Uh, right. Uh, Ryobi, they own. They, I mean, there's a ton of those tools at Stanley Black and Decker that you you're buying all these different tools, thinking they're coming from uh, a, a different tool manufacturer, and they're not. They're coming from Stanley Black and Decker. They're the, they're so the main. They own. Crossman, ten years ago. Actually, the funny story is, I went in to get it because it was supposedly on sale. So yeah, that's a good deal. I think it was like like ninety nine bucks on sale. It had a wrong at fifty bucks. Huh. So I went up to the register and said, "Hey, it says fifty bucks." And the kid goes, <laughs> uh, "Mark Lindsay out there, Mark Lindsay CNC out there says, Psst, Craftsman routers were made by Rigid until about two years ago." So. Yep, rigid, rigid was making Craftsman routers, but I'm telling you, all most of the all these tool companies, their parent company is Stanley Black and Decker. What they will do is, let's say for Dewalt, for instance, Dewalt's its own company builds its own tools. They will go in and buy out Dewalt. They'll leave the name of Dewalt and Dewalt is their own subsidiary company, but they're still owned by Stanley Black and Decker. They control them and own them. Uh, that actually happened with the uh, Excalibur scroll saw. 
the P, the original maker of the Excalibur scroll saw, the design, the uh, parallel link design came from Ex uh, the people that invented the Excalibur, and they allowed DeWalt sold them the rights to that parallel link, and they designed the DW788 scroll saw, uh, the internal working component components of a 788 DeWalt 788 scroll saw are almost identical to they're designed the same way as the Excalibur. So uh, all these tool companies are kind of like owned by a conglomerate. And now we don't even have Excalibur anymore. Um, the guy that runs Seiko has uh, Excalibur quit, quit producing Excalibur scroll saws. They, uh, so the guy that on Seiko that sold Excalibur scroll saws uh, bought the rights to make his own and now is making the Seiko scroll saw, which is still using the parallel link thing that the Excalibur and the DeWalt use is just now they're underneath the name Seiko. And Steve Good did a, a review on that. And it's supposed to be one heck of a saw. I saw it in Atlanta and it's a nice saw. Uh, well, guys, we're when we went over. I don't think D, uh, Dave had a show tonight. Uh, no, he doesn't. Yeah. So we went over, but um, I'm not seeing any questions out there. I don't, like I said, I'm not a, I know about routers. I've used routers over the years, but I'm not a expert by any means on routers. Uh, but so I, it's okay to do like my, my dad said years ago. He said, when you're going to go out there, you, you, you spend your money, you buy your, your, your good tools, and you, you, you set them up on the shelf, and you use the ones from that one in the company in the back back there yeah. uh, to do all your work. And then when they throw away them, throw away when you get through with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I I buy stuff from Harbor Freight all the time. I'm sorry. There we go. I, I, yeah. And uh, uh, you can say what you want to, and uh, but I, I do uh, I do kind of like do some research on them. I'll go online if I'm going to buy a tool from, especially one of these. Like when I'm going to buy this plunge router, I went online and I read the reviews there, and then I typed in reviews on the their plunge router and uh, read a lot of the people with their complaints and what they had with it and everything. Overall, it had really good reviews. And so when I compare that to like a three hundred dollar plunge router to mm -hmm. like a fifty sixty dollar with my twenty percent off coupon, I went like, and I'm going to use this thing eight or ten times, and I'm paying how much for it? So I went and spent the fifty sixty bucks at Harbor Freight, use this thing, and put it on the shelf. And now if I need a plunge router, I've got one. I haven't broke the bank. And I'll use it again and again and again. And uh, where, would like a, say, where would you say you got most of your bits from? Uh, you they're a conglomeration. Uh, I, I, most of my bits, um, I bought so many over the years, I couldn't actually tell you. This set I've had for such a long time, and for a long time, this was the only set I ever owned. But I bought this nice, this was a nice set. This I think this set run me back in the day. Uh, this has got to be close to 20 years old, but I think this set... It's a uh, hickory woodworking. Hmm. Hickory woodworking. I never heard of them. Yeah, I will. <laughs> if you were as old as dirt, you'd know about them. <laughs> I'm older than dirt, my God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, no kidding. Uh, I bought this set years and years ago. This has got to be 20 years old, and for years, this is the only set I had, the only set I used, and it it's been outstanding, outstanding. Uh, for this, yes, hickory, hickory woodworking. Years uh, ago, I used to buy some uh, bits from Jacetta Tool Works, and they're out of business now. But boy, I used to really like their bits. They were reasonably placed, reasonably priced, and uh, and they were really nice bits. Well, you take back to uh, those ball nose, that one sixteenth, and those some of those ball nose, those bits that I bought that are a mana bits. And when you're talking about the rough end or the roughing of uh, CNC. Uh, you know, it, all that's going in there is hogging out a lot of the material to get it out of the way so that when the small bit comes in to do the detail work, it hasn't got to fight all that uh, right. material to get it out of the way to do the detail work. You don't have to have an amount of bit to do that. It's just roughing it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I use the cheaper bits to do the that and then buy the nice amount now to do the detail work, to come in and do all the little nooks and crannies and everything in the, 
in the piece I want. And then I'll, that Amana I know is a really good bit. It'll last me for years to come. So, you know, that's the way I look at it. What am I getting? What am I doing? What am I getting out of this? What do, what do I really need? You know, I can go buy a two or three dollar bit to do all my roughing uh, for six, eight, ten projects, and not have to worry about it for a few bucks, and then buy the good bit to uh, do the rest of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave used that quarter cable seventy five eighteen, and the motor alone that sucker is twelve pounds. Yes. That is a beast, that 7518. That is a beast. But yet he's got that big, huge green machine. It was green at one time that he strapped it on, the one that he sits on top of and he moves yeah. himself around. Yeah, it <laughs> takes something like that machine to carry that 7518. Uh, Mark Lindsay says, uh, a man I make great bits. And yes, they do. I don't. There's no doubt in my mind they do. Uh, Whiteside. That's, I couldn't think of them. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mark. A uh, white side, yeah. There's another retailer that and some of those, a couple of those bits that I have in my stock over there are white side bits. That's some good bits. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think this one I just bought the other day. Took both of these that I got in the other day. That one. This is a, another. That's mm -hmm. a white side. And it even says, "Can see something, but can't see what it says." Uh, it says white side. That's a a W. Mm. That's a W right there. So, and then this I've one. Got some of those too. Yeah, this one is a white side. Mm. This is a eighth inch ball nose. Both of these are white side that I bought. And then, then like this is an Amana. This is an Amana. Uh, one or more of these is an Amana in here somewhere. And, oh, this one's an Amana. Uh, yeah, these are all Amana bits. So. All right, so... I guess that about covers it for tonight. Uh, we're running down. We got 30, 38 people still watching. One time we had almost 60. Wow. wow. <laughs> and we're an hour and a half over. Right. Yeah, we're an hour and a half over, so we still got a lot of people watching. Uh, guys, if you have any more you want or anything you want me to talk about or uh, Natanic River Woodworking or Woodcraft, Chris Neelan's still out there, Mark Lindsay, Donna Presley, Ken Moon. Uh, Chris Glitzo's out there with us tonight. Thank you, Chris, for watching Inspired Woodworks. Guys, please, uh, we had almost 60 or so over 60 people watching us one time. I don't have 60 thumbs ups. <laughs> There's a little, <laughs> like, so give me a thumbs up. Let me know you like what you see. I know I might be ugly, but at least uh, if the show's going all right, you can at least <laughs> give me a thumbs up. <laughs> We had a Harbor Freight drinking game. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I guess we're getting winding down. Any y'all got any questions or anything else you want to uh, say? When do we freight? get our cat of Harbor Freight? Do what? When do we get our cat of Harbor Freight money? <laughs> <laughs> what was it you said earlier that you thought you had made me mad about that? You said oh, <laughs> anything I said tonight. Yeah, I, I just. Oh. Said you don't make me mad. It take a lot more than that to make me mad. Well, uh, you, like you, you, you did say something smart alecky. I, re I remember you saying something smart alecky before, but that's just normal Donald. So, <laughs> hey, Steve French just joined the chat. Steve French is out there. Hey, Steve, how you doing? I missed the show. Yeah, you you're a day late and a dollar short. So, or an hour or so, anyway. Yeah, yeah, he's an hour and a half short <laughs> late. <laughs> an hour. And a half. I should. Re Al Forte said I should re rename the show to include Harbor Freight in it. I am going <laughs> to do a, a video, and I'm going to go through my shop and point out the Harbor Freight tools that I have, and uh, and, and do something like uh, Harbor Freight tools that you should buy or that are really good or that work. Harbor Freight tools that work. Buy 
you're going y'all going to need to buy a half a gallon for that game that night. <laughs> yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to stock up for that show. Warn us a couple weeks. I, I, I don't think I'll do it as a show. I'll do it as a video and produce it out and put it on my website. Okay, y'all going to need a half a gallon for that video. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that's all I can think of. Uh, I mowed the yard, ate dinner, and forgot all about the show. Well, Thank you, Steve French. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but at least his lawn is mowed. Yeah, your your dinner and yard were more important than me. Man. <laughs> priorities, so, people. <laughs> yeah, really. Come on, man. It's very straight, Steve. Um, Y'all got anything else? Everybody's quiet. What kind? Of, oh, <laughs> let's go down the line real quick. What kind of router routers do you have, uh, Chris? <laughs> I didn't talk to I've you. Got a, <laughs> <laughs> I've got um, Craftsman and Ryobi. A Ryobi. A Ryobi's a good I've, – I've had some Ryobi tools, tools over the years, and they've always treated – I've got a half-inch Ryobi drill, and it's worked great. Uh, Donald, nice. what kind of router do you got? Uh, go I got a Ryobi, and for, like, little small detail stuff, I got a, a router attachment for the Dremel tool. Yes. That worked good. Donna? Nice. Craftsman and Ryobi. Craftsman and Ryobi. Jim? I got a Craftsman, I've got this Porter cable, and I've got a Bosch Colt in my CNC. Cool. Paul? I have a Hitachi M12V in my router table. I have a Craftsman. I have a Porter cable 690 and a Harbor Freight trim router. Wow. You got Damn it. Uh, Russ Meadows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a Craftsman, and I got a DeWalt, and I got the Harbor Freight trim router as well. Okay. Lee? Uh, technically, I don't have one, but I probably have about three that I'll inherit from my dad. <laughs> and then Shane? Uh, we both have Bosch all the way. Bosch. Those are – I've heard a lot of good stuff about those, about the Bosch. Yeah, they're really nice. I like it. I don't, and, and, guys, I don't say in any way, shape, or form that you can lose on buying some of those, like the Bosch, uh, the Hitachi. Hita I just bought the, the Hitachi uh, um, miter saw out there, and I, I, I've only used it uh, here a couple for a month. Or, well, I bought it, got it right after Father's Day because I got the uh, gift cards for uh, that place that we cannot mention. Uh, and so I went over there and bought it. And, uh, and yes, I am a blue box store card holder. Uh, Ooh, yeah, I am. I've got one in my wall. I've got one of those that says L O, whatever. However you spell that in my wall. Over to the dark side. Yep. Well, I mean, they had that uh, Hitachi uh, saw cheaper than anybody else. It was like four hundred and four hundred fifty, four hundred eighty dollars. But they had it on sale for four hundred six. And then I had a hundred dollar gift card. And then if you signed up that day. Uh, and got a low, whoop, almost said it, almost said it, caught myself. <laughs> and you got one of those, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Yeah, if you signed up that day and got a Lowe's credit card, you automatically got 20% off of your purchase. So I'm like, that's a no-brainer. I had a big sign up there. I'm like, that's a no-brainer. I know, I mean, I, I knew my credit was good enough. I'm I'm signing up and getting a dang Lowe's card for this because I got the 406, $100 off from my gift cards from my Father's Day, and 20% off for signing up for a Lowe's card. I walked out with that uh, Hitachi router for like 200 bucks. See, if you just sent all that stuff to me and bought me one, we could have got 10% off top of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I've used that thing now for since Father's Day, right after Father's Day when I bought it, and I love it. The blade is like really, really, it's one of those thin curved blades, and it cuts smooth and nice and accurate. And right out of the box, I did a test on it to see if the 45s and everything swing it left and right were, and the uh, sideways are all lined up on the saw. It, mm -hmm. They sure were. I didn't have to make any adjustments to it right out of the box. So I was like, wow, I'm pretty impressed with this. And, oh, and I forgot. Um, if you bought it that day for the 406, you got the free 150 or $180 stand, well, uh, mobile stand with it. So I've got a stand. I ain't even took the stand out of the box. The box is still out there in the stand. Or the stand is still out there in the box. I'll get it right in a second. We all start calling you Russ. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the it's, other Russ. <laughs> well, I what I did was my DeWalt's. Isn't that sacrilegious? 
my DeWalt stand, I put rollers on it and made it, uh, and it's, I really like that stand and have it all set up, is a kind of a universal stand. So all I had to do was take the, unbolt the two things off of the DeWalt saw and bolt them right to the Hitachi and just lock it onto the DeWalt stand. So I've got an Hitachi saw sitting on my DeWalt stand. Hmm. So, and it works perfect. Nice. And one that's, thing I that's blasphemous. really love about that Hitachi that I did not have before, one, it has the laser. I've never had a laser. Oh, well, I had a laser on the other one, but it, uh, it's one of those lasers you buy and attach to the saw blade and use the same or uh, the screw, and it, you know, makes the line. It always, sometimes it work right out of the box. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't. Should have took it back, and I never did. So it's got a laser that works real great. And then all the second thing I like is the oh, it goes up against the wall. My I needed like 16 inches, 12 to 16 inches with my Dewalt saw away from the wall to, mm -hmm. for that slide for that DeWalt saw. This that, that's one thing I've uh, never understood quite that's one thing I've never quite understood or could figure out. Why do you need a laser on a chop saw that you already got set up to cut in a certain direction anyway? Exactly. <laughs> I I've, I've wondered that myself. Because if I you know I make the mark and just slide it up and the laser is on I can see the mark and just pull it. It's there. Uh, well, unless you're cutting you know in the what? dark, you're gonna see the, you're gonna see the mark you made anyway. <laughs> but I have to. I before I how I would do it before I would drop the blade on the material and make sure it lined up on the line. Now I don't have to. The laser shoot, push it right to the laser and just do it. Okay, before I, I would. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, but I agree because I actually went and got me a separate little laser that I installed on my uh, uh, little miter saw, and that thing cuts perfectly right on the line so yeah. i use it a lot the one, I that I, it. the one that i had i think i just got a bad one i was too stupid enough to take it back and get a refund uh because from day one when i put it on it seemed to work real great for the first like day or two or week or whatever and then it started it come on and then you were cutting it to go off or one day you it would be on and you're going to make the cut and you line it up and it go off and you're like all right so now you got to drop the blade it never worked great you must have got that one from that orange store I won't mention. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that electric came from Harbor Freight. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's one of the only things I ever bought from Harbor Freight that didn't work right. <laughs> so, uh, Andrew, Andrew Haig is out there. Is that how you spell it? H A G U E? That's how you say it. Yeah, <laughs> Big Sky Tools has refurbished Hitachi tools at really low costs. I don't know where Big Sky Tools is, or is that online? It's online. Oh, Big Sky Tools is online. Uh, Don, uh, Steve French says, Donald's loving this. Russ has gone to the blue side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I looked, I was, I'd been thinking about wanting, and there was two saws out there that had the... Uh, capability of basically going up against the wall and that was the Bosch and the uh, Hitachi and so those were the two of my choices uh, I'm going to fix my DeWalt it's one of the bearings on the motor that has gone bad I took it apart and found that and put it back together and I used it for a while but it's not turning up to speed because the bearings dragging it down and it's making a noise so uh, and it's an old saw I've had that thing for 15 15 plus 50, at least 15 years but anyway, and the second turnoff was the fact that I had to have it so far away. So I started doing my research when I started knowing this thing was going bad. I still got the DeWalt. It's in my, uh, it's in the area of tools that one day I'll do something with. <laughs> and uh, I uh, started doing the review, and those were the two saws that I liked. Hitachi's a very good saw, and the Bosch is a very good saw. And those were one going to be one of the ones I was going to buy. And I... The only reason I wasn't going to get another DeWalt is because that DeWalt served me well is the new ones are, guess what, the same way. You've got to keep them away from the wall. So when I picked up the, uh, I don't remember what I was doing now. It wasn't the paper. When I was going on the computer or whatever, uh, I had something popped up and said, you know, a Tashi saw on sale. And I'm like, oh, really? Hmm. So I clicked on it and went over there, and sure enough, it was that, that store. Was it? Don't <laughs> lie, man. You be crawling Lowe's online all day long. <laughs> it was. It was. At, it was at Lowe's, and the first thing I saw was is was uh, the price was knocked down to four hundred and six ninety five. I believe it was, and I went like, "Whoa, 
that is excellent. That's like sixty, eighty dollars off the regular price. And then it said, and you get the free mobile stand, one hundred and fifty, one hundred eighty dollar, whatever it was, stand that goes with it for free. And I'm like, dude, one hundred a stand, and it's four oh six. So I'm like. And then my, I just come off of Father's Day, and I had the two. I had the hundred dollar gift card one of my daughters gave me from that blue. Oh, it was funny when I opened up the card. She gave it. It was my daughter Ashley. She went to open up the card, the Father's Day card. Guess what's staring me in the face? A blue yeah. gift card. <laughs> the L O W E S. Did and she know how you feel about that blue company? She actually did not. <laughs> And oh. so when I picked it up and looked at the card, my wife looked over and she goes, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley goes, what? She goes, he don't like that store. <laughs> and Ashley was like, what? And I was like, don't worry, sweetheart. Don't worry. I mean, it's no big deal. I said, and I explained to her. And she goes, well, I can get you another card. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's fine. I'll use it. I, I'll use it. And it, it's not the store per se, as far as the quality of their tool, they carry brands like Hitachi, um, uh, the Walt, Porta Cable. You know, they carry all a lot of name brands. Sometimes they have stuff that the Home Depot don't have, and sometimes Home Depot has stuff that they don't have. They carry quality appliances and stuff. It's just I've never had success. Dave Gatton, my good friend. Said it right. Imagine whenever it's just like you're going to a self-serve gas station. You've got to do everything yourself. You've got to go find it. You've got to put it on the cart. You got to take it to them, let it check it out, and you got to take it out and put it in your vehicle. If you treat it like that, it's a great store. <laughs> Dave Gatton said that. <laughs> you owe him about it. I can't. I can argue none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you. Are, did y'all hear what happened to? We got. Oh, we're gonna stay on here just a few more minutes, guys, and we're gonna get off of here. Did y'all hear what happened to Jim Bashirs? Nope. No. What happened? Oh, okay. Jim. What happened? No, not Jim Bashirs. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, and, and he hasn't even been playing the game with us. <laughs> what are y'all talking about me over there? So that's what y'all been doing. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Jerry you Blake with Snickering because we were talking dirty. Jerry Blakesley. Jerry Blakesley. <laughs> y'all hear what happened, Jerry Blakesley? It's another outstanding person in the group. <laughs> yeah. Jerry goes. Jerry goes to Lowe's to get this. Uh, the oh, yeah, bought yeah. the tile, but did not buy enough tile, and he had to go back and get more. He goes to Lowe's to get the tile, and when he gets there, they first off they tell him they don't have any more of that tile or they're out or whatever. And after he's called them, they said yes, they do have it. So I believe this is the story is correct. So anyway, they finally find the tile, and the tile is behind two layers of other tile stacked in the back. And so he was like, "You're going to take that tile? Can you get a forklift or take that? No, no, couldn't get a forklift. That's right, it was stacked to the floor." There was no forklift or pallet underneath it. So they basically told him, or that, oh, I'll I'll get somebody to help me we'll back in a minute. They never showed back up. He sent somebody else come by and said, Hey, can you help move this tile? I got it. Nobody wanted to move that tile. He ended up moving the tile out of the way himself, and he stacked the tile that he moved out in the middle of the floor, basically, and got <laughs> the tile that he needed. And you know, they wanted him to put that tile back that he took out. Uh -uh. Yeah, they did. They got mad at him. Even the manager told him, "You are going to put that tile back, right?" <laughs> yeah, right. Well, see that—that's uh, something I've never seen seen anybody do. I ain't never seen no such mess as that. Yeah, and then they didn't even help him load it. They told him they were. Uh, they the manager said, "Yeah, I'll send a couple of guys out there." He took it out to his truck and stood out there in the front waiting for a little bit, and they didn't show up. He had to load it himself. They didn't help him load it. And and once again, uh, yeah, I think he I think he said about the time he come up to the last two boxes, somebody showed up. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm not the only person that has a beef with that place. Well, I mean, see, I, it, it's like I told him he he quite literally needed to talk to talk to management and corporate about that because that was an employee problem. Yes. Like here with us, our problem. 
my problem. A lot of the times, I'm only one person in a busy yeah. store, and I'm covering electrical, and you've got those bells going off. I can only be one place. And a lot of times, I'm covering plumbing, too. Yeah. It, it, there's only so much I can do. Yeah, I, I, I'm i not disagreeing with you, Donald, but my point is, is this is a, a consistent it, thing with Lowe's and their stores. And somebody said the other day, we'll go to another Lowe's. They're all, I like that bull crap. I've been to, uh, to seven or eight local stores in this within a 30 mile area where I'm at and every single one of them the same way. I, it's not the merchandise. It's not the store. The store is clean. It's not the way they have the stuff stacked. That's okay. <coughs> you, the people in there don't know what they're doing and they could care less and they don't want to help you. That's what my beef is about the lows. And I, and I, I know you work there, Donald. I'm not, you know, I'm, and I know you probably do do the type of person that I know you are from my, being friends with you for the last few years. I guarantee you, you're not one of those type of people, and you would help people out. There's no doubt in my I mind. To, or at least try to find out what they're doing. The right. problem is, even I run into. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I, know. I dealt with I. Uh, oh man. Uh. uh Y'all look at Lee Nice. Says, Why so many on. stores? And where, where I'm located out here in Florida, Ken, we have tons of Lowe's and Home Depots. With uh, I would say there's probably, I could probably say six, at least five or six Home Depots and five or six Lowe's within a 30 mile area where I'm at. Uh, you've got Brandon and Tampa area, which is that way from me. And there's a section in Brandon that has, Brandon itself, I think, has two or three Lowe's. So, I mean, they're, they're quite a few around. I've got one, two, three, four Home Depots within 10 miles of me <laughs> where I live. So, yeah, we've got, we've got a quite a bit. There's a, this is a well-populated area that I'm, I'm kind of in the center of a lot of well-populated, like Lakeland's over that way from Mulberry. Brandon and Tampa's that way. Uh, Orlando's that way. And so we've got quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of area. So we got, I mean, that's like with me. I mean, you know what I know, Russ. I, I went there applying cause I knew woodworking and the hardware and that stuff. I, I, where'd they put me at? Electrical. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Al Forte's out there. Robert Evans. Hey, Robert. How you doing? Glad you're still hanging with us. Mark Lindsay's still hanging around. Uh, Ken Moon Scott and Ken Moon says I can't be on the show. I might have to leave. Yeah, well, you're still out there, Ken, and we're going on dang near two hours of a show, and you're still out there. What's the problem? And yeah, we had a spot too. He could have come on camera. Could have come on in. JP Woodworking. What's up, everybody? I think. I have infected Russia's show. I turned. And he's talking about Lowe's. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about Lowe's in Britain. We have been talking about Lowe's, JP. We've been talking about them. I just, you know, one of those things. Well, guys, Crit Split. So, how y'all doing? Haven't seen. I guess that's about all we can get into tonight. And once again, we went over. We're almost ten o'clock. <laughs> Jeez. All it's right. any consolation? And, it's only nine o'clock here. Same yeah. here. <laughs> oh, and I'll tell you another thing, Wes. What I get caught up with where I can't help customers that really need some is because I get caught up arguing with people about where's y'all's luggage at? It's low. <laughs> <laughs> where's y'all's luggage? Well, you sure you're not at Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where's your receipt books at? <laughs> At all right, Max across the street. <laughs> I'm glad all y'all are still out there. Uh, this JP Woodwork says it's 3 a.m. where he's at, so we ain't got nothing on that boy. 3 a 3 o'clock in the Norma in the morning. He's a night Tell owl. Him. Tell him to go to bed. Chris Glitzo wants us to talk about table saws next time. I could talk about table saws. I got a, a lot of stuff on table saws. I I know a lot about table saws. I have. Three of them. So I'll have to clean mine off now. Yep. Yeah, really. <laughs> the best one I've got, I've got a contractor portable and another one. And then the best one is my wife bought me this 
past Christmas uh, is the rigid uh, cabinet saw. The uh, can't think of the name of it now. That hybrid it's, saw. Yeah, it's it's nice. The cast iron table. Yeah, uh, nice saw. That's a real nice saw. I love that thing. And I was using a Craftsman, which was a great saw. Don't get me wrong, and I still got it. But a Craftsman portable contractor ten inch saw, and I used that for years. It just didn't have the accuracy. Uh, it took me if I wanted to cut a board and it wanted to be a nice straight cut. It took me about ten minutes to get that thing set up so I could cut it. So. Now I just move the fence over and lock it down, and boom, that, that rigid thing. To, to take us on out, let's, let's, let's kind of highlight the, the companies we've been talking about. Uh, we've been talking about Lowe's. <laughs> we've talked about Home Depot. Yep. And we've talked about that uh, HF store. Uh, Harbor Freight. That? That's the one. Thank you very much. We've been talking about Harbor Freight, Lowe's, and uh, uh, very good. Home Depot, mm. those have been mine. And I'll tell you, a lot of good buys that guys you will find out there. And I'm a prime, I'm a prime member, so uh, I love Amazon. There's a lot of good stuff. You can get a lot of good deals now. Uh, Patrick from Patrick's Wood Workshop has been. I don't know if y'all been noticing that, but he's been popping uh, on Facebook, uh, popping some stuff on, on Amazon. That's some really, really, really great deals out there. So. All right, guys, let's call it tonight. It's two hours, and uh, I think I know we've got <laughs> we still got 38 people watching us. <laughs> it's, 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 it has gone up, too, actually, over the last 20 minutes. They, they don't want us to leave. They want us to stay here with them. See what happens when I finally come back on the show. <laughs> they, usually we have twice this amount when you're not done. Yeah. Dang. It's a draw, man. Wrong. I, uh, I, I saw the ad. It was the return of Donald. I, I saw the ad. Yeah. yeah. It was the return of Donald, and the they just didn't show up. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Patrick Workshop. Is this thing still on? Yep, Patrick, we're still here. We're still having fun. We're still here. So we just were talking about you, Patrick, about all those deals you've been posting out there on Amazon. I'm, I that place can get me in, in trouble because there's two things. Number one, uh, you just click it and you see it online. They got a good price for it, and then a prime, if you're a Prime member, you get free shipping. Let me tell you, uh, if all you've got to do is order two or three things Prime, and you've paid for the Prime membership with the free shipping, and it's not only free shipping, it's free two-day shipping, yep. faster than anybody else. And not only that is I have a Amazon Prime card, mm -hmm. so credit card. So mm -hmm. I not only can order from Amazon, I don't have to don't come out of my bank account. I can put it on my charge card through Amazon. So that place could really get me in trouble. <laughs> how, how, it ain't gonna be too long before we see you on the street with a little tin cup. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have to be real careful about what I order from there. Because it's like, oh, I want one of these. I want one of these. And two days later, it shows up. And then next 30 days later, I get the bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that, so, all right, guys. Yeah, you're trash my treasure. He goes, good night, guys. Yep, I think I'm right there at you. All right, guys, thank you. You're trash my treasure here. Jim Bashir's is out there. Katie Dotson, J. Pood Woodwork. I'm glad to see you, JP. Glad you got to show up and visit us for a little while. Um, Patrick from Patrick's Workshop, Katie Dotson, uh, who was some of the others out there? Mark um, Lindsay, JP Woodward, Ken Moon. Mark, Ken Moon, all y'all guys out there, I'm sorry if I don't remember your name. Uh, but thank you for being on here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Donald. A long time no see. Hope you can come back as soon as you can. Uh, next Saturday. Cool. And then Don, glad to have you on. Your internet's finally fixed so you can be around. Thank you very much. Yep, and then uh, Jim Bashirs, Paul, Russ Meadows, Lee Nyden, and Mr. Shane Cole. Thank you all for being on here. We're going to miss John Shacker. Uh, like I told y'all earlier, his he's having computer issues, and he said he might not be on for a while because he can't really. You know, I just realized you got Donald and Donna on the show. You were yeah. asking for trouble. Well, <laughs> hey, what's better than Donald and Donna is Russ and Russ. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, the rest of the rush show. That's what I told Charles. It's coming. Yep, 
Yeah, he keeps it up. I'm gonna replace him. You're gonna be my co-host. It'll be the Russ and Rush show. So. All right, guys. Thank you for all once again, all y'all on the panel and all you out there in the chat. You out there are just as important. You make this thing special and make this thing happen. The only one thing I need to do, and that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody, and God bless. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> <laughs>